Story Hinge, Episode 86, Jen Grisanti, A Life of Story. The best way to be a strong storyteller is to be present when your own is happening. So I work with writers on identifying and mining their emotional truth so that we understand within that emotional truth what their message to the world is and why they want to tell the type of stories they tell. So for me, story is, is a merging of, of an emotional truth in your own life with your imaginary, imaginary or fictional story that you're putting on the page. Welcome to Story Hinge. At Story Hinge, we explore foundational ideas and beliefs. We believe everyone has a beautiful story to grow. Now here's your host, Jason Badari. Jen Grisanti's career shifted in 1992. The story begins in ways that yours might, by working with someone who truly believed in her. She assisted and was mentored by Aaron Spelling, one of the greatest executives and most prolific producers in the business. She learned early on how to develop a story and make a script the best it could be before it hit the air. She worked with executive producers, showrunners, and staff of over 15 primetime shows. She had the unique opportunity to give script notes on a daily basis and see them implemented weekly. On familiar shows like 90210, Malrose Place, Charmed, Medium, Numbers, NCIS, The 4400, and Girlfriends. She was near the pinnacle of her career, her path, her dream, in 2004, when she became vice president of current programs. But like many of us, life changed. Within a few years, her career path would unexpectedly shift again. And in January 2008, Jen launched Jen Grisanti Consultancy, a highly successful consulting firm dedicated to helping talented writers break into the industry. Today, Jen is an international speaker an acclaimed story slash career consultant, where she has helped hundreds of writers shape their material, hone their pitches, and focus their careers. She's also the author of multiple books, including one we'll talk about today called Change Your Story, Change Your Life, A Path to Your Success. Jen, welcome to Story Hinge. Excellent. Thank you so much. I appreciate that introduction. Yeah, it was really fun to, to go through and learn about you and, and, and see some, so many places where you line up to I guess I feel like I'm a new explorer in a place where you've been exploring for some time. <laughs> yes. Well, I love that. I mean, we all view story through our own worldview and what story has happened in our own lives really influences that. So whether you're new or whether you've done this for 20 years, it, it, it really, it all has value. Yeah. You know? And one thing I found in exploring is you, about you is you, you talk about two difficult times in your life, one with divorce and also with this career change I, I mentioned in the introduction. And I guess why don't we go there and hear a little bit about that. And I think you also described that as def that those were times that helped you define your voice. Yes. So I think why don't we go there and, see, and hear what you mean by that, how of those course. things defined your voice. Of course. So I had two uh, major turning points in my life. And the those turning points included uh, a marriage, uh, a long relationship that ended in a short marriage. Mm. And at that time in my life represented the death of the fairy tale. Uh, so my life shifted then. And then I essentially married my career for the next uh, 15 years and, and through my all into uh, getting where I wanted to be as an executive and covering uh, multiple primetime shows, as you mentioned, and working for two sister companies. And that shifted when, after two and a half years with the new company, which was the sister company to Spelling Television Inc., I... Uh, got in a heated discussion, mm -hmm. let's call it, or not got in, I, I was confronted with a heated discussion and was forced to make a choice that in the moment 
I knew if I aligned my choice with my values and did what I thought needed to be done, then uh, I could be ending my career. And I knew that. And I was cognizant of that. And I made the choice because my, my feeling in the moment was if my company doesn't back me, I'm not supposed to be here. So I made a choice and two weeks later, I was told that my contract wasn't being picked up and I had the good fortune of having several months left on my contract. So it, it, it actually was a blessing in my life. In the moment, it was devastating and mm. unexpected and abrupt because I had five shows and I had never been warned about anything. So I, you, you live under the illusion that your future is protected and secure if you put the work into it. And, yeah. and that thought process had to shift after things changed. So when you went through that, you know, you said you, you, there was values that were underlying that, that you, you stuck to. So you kind of knew, at least had some sense that this might happen. Yes. But even, even after you did that, was there times when you're like, ah, was that the right choice? Did I mess up? Did I? I think, yes. I definitely think part of the process of, it's interesting because in, in my book, Change Your Story, Change Your Life, um, as many of us go through major life turning points, um, millions of people get divorced and millions of people lose their jobs. And mm -hmm. that's part of our life process. And how we respond to that is what makes the difference. And for me, uh, part of my spiritual journey after the loss was really understanding my part in that outcome. And it really, I think that it was meant to happen by looking at the direction my life has gone in. Like, I, I think there is a forgiveness and an acceptance that that was meant to be part of my path because that led me to uh, do oddly what I had wanted to do in the first place before I became an executive. Hmm. So there was irony in that my initial plan A, which was to be an author and speak around the world on story, became a reality once this happened. So, so there was definitely an interesting amount of irony. And I definitely think whenever we are in uh, something that is heated, like whenever there's a discussion going on and it, it is heightened in a way, like for me, I typically was always able to handle um, situations like this without any problem. And so suddenly there was a problem. And, and I do think that part of your journey when something shifts in your life is taking your responsibility mm. for what led to that. And so I definitely did look at, could I have handled this differently? You know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that's important for you to bring that up. Cause you, as you're sharing that, I'm thinking of a couple how you talked about this really took you back on your truer path. Mm -hmm. Had you forgotten it during that journey or was it still always there and you just never had I forgotten what going back to doing what you really wanted to do while you're being an executive and doing no, this. actually when I was at, so I started as an assistant to Aaron Spelling in 1992 and then I eventually ran current programming at spelling and when you run current programming, so your audience knows, uh, so development would sell the pilot and develop the pilot. And then once it got picked up to series, it would go into the current programming department. Mm -hmm. So it was my job to oversee the project with the executive producer from story concept to outline the script to screen. So I, uh, it was the studio at that point, it was becoming the studio network but it was still in transition then. So there was a studio and a network 
on every project. And so it was like you were the liaison between the showrunner uh, mm. and the studio and the network. So, so it was ultimately the job of the current programming department to make sure that everything was where it needed to be when things hit the air. Now, the executive producer obviously has the ultimate uh, control in that outcome, but we help assist in that process. Uh, so going into the, that aspect of it, I, I'm sorry, now you asked. I no, was saying you, you talked about really this, this change in your career led you back to where you really want oh, to Oh, you hit. said, did I ever think about before? Yes, I thank you. Uh, yeah. So Aaron Spelling had said to me, go write a book, sell it. He, my entire time as an executive with him and starting as an assistant in his office, he always said to me, you should write, you should write, you should write, because he would read my development notes, he would read uh, when I give him a birthday card or anything, a synopsis of a show, and he would always tell me I should write. So the initial intention was yes, I'm going to utilize this experience when I was in his office and I'm going to write a book on story and the business. What I didn't recognize, which I, I went to a book signing of a very famous person who does this and mm -hmm. does script consulting. And I said to her, I want to do what you do. And, and she said to me, well, you can't do what I do. And I was a junior level executive at that point. She goes, you can't do what I do until you get the experience. Mm. So that was when I became aware that even though I wanted to be the author, speaker, traveling the world on story, I had to get the education by working for the studio for the amount of years that I did. So it actually was a great thing for me to hear at that point because then having credibility to start a business doing what I do, it helped enormously to have corporate experience as a foundation. Whereas now I feel like millennials are out there starting businesses left and right without that corporate experience. Mm -hmm. So, so it was just, that was reflective of the time that I came up in the business. In. Yeah. Now I hear you say that. It reminds me of um, other guests I have often commented when they look back, they see the connecting dots. Yes. It makes sense to where they're at now. Well, you know, in the moments in that, in that experience when they were there, they were like, I'm out of place or this doesn't work. But looking back, it makes more sense. Oh, yeah. You have to. When you're an executive, I mean, I remember people would say to me, God, Jen, when I would see you at the gym, it was like you weren't even there because you would immediately go to the treadmill and you'd be reading scripts. And it was like you weren't even there. And, and I think when you're climbing the ladder in any business and you mm. become so enmeshed in the work and the goal and the destination that you lose a part of your spirit are you lose being connected to your spirit in that process because becoming attached to your ego simply for survival reasons uh, is all part mm. of, of really uh, finding success and creating longevity with success. Mm. Now I, I mentioned that, you know, you, you talk about how this led to you defining your voice or connecting. Oh, yes. how, how did that or how that work out? What did you mean? Well, by it's interesting. I had someone right after it happened, I, I pitched the idea of this business to CAA and they were massive supporters and helped me with the realization of this vision. And mm -hmm. uh, I had a manager call me at that point in time and I had been writing blogs for the Puff Huffington Post. And so much of what I worked with writers on as an executive and then as a consultant and a writing instructor at NBC was finding their voice. And so that was something that I had always worked with people on. And I understood it from being able to help them identify their voice. But suddenly I had a manager calling me saying, I think you need to write a book. 
And I said, really? I said, why do you think I should write a book? And he said, because I've read your blogs, I've heard your message, I hear your voice, and I know you have something to say. And I said, oh, this is really interesting for me. I work with people all the time on identifying their voice. When mm -hmm. you tell me you hear my voice, what are you hearing? And he said, I'm hearing the story of a woman who knows what it is to work very hard to achieve and accomplish and then knows what it is to fall and redefine her path. Hmm. And he said, and I think millions of people need to hear that message. And, and so that led to me writing Change Your Story, Change Your Life. Wow. Okay. So I guess there's a, there's sounds like there's an element of this, this understanding yourself, understanding your own story mm -hmm. and bringing it out. Can you maybe explain that a little bit more and how, how you went through it, how, how that, how that worked for you? It was interesting to me. You're, you're kind of describing, you, you could see it in other people. But yes. It was more difficult to oh, see you yourself. Oh, you can totally <laughs> see it in other people. And it's very, it, you know, voice is a very, um, ambiguous, uh, it all comes down to the worldview of the person interpreting uh, what they're reading. So for me, voice comes through when there is a depth in what a person, like when I finish a script, if I have total clarity on what the writer's why was for writing the story, as mm. well as what the why was for the protagonist for desiring the achievement of the goal, then I understand the voice. The voice is clear. They understood the concept. They knew what they wanted to say. Now that happens probably about 10% of the time. Hmm. I would say up until then, I think the, the biggest correlation I've discovered with somebody coming into their voice is if they've gone through a number of life turns and have had to really learn what it is to bring their life back in balance, then they have something to say to the world. And then uh, the clarity of their intention with the stories they tell is there and the voice will get to a place where it can't be ignored and that's when doors open with the way you describe that it makes me think of there's a strong elements of authenticity of vulnerability to get to, to get to that place a hundred percent like being vulnerable we are at a time climate wise with everything going on with the me too movement where uh we are seeing people in massive powerful positions uh, being put into, forced into vulnerability and redemption for some and for others, you know, complete destruction. And, and, and you only hope and pray that there is an internal triumph that they go through and, and really trying to understand where they went wrong in that process. But I definitely feel that you know, when I, when I look at everything going on in the world, authenticity, vulnerability, honesty, rawness, like I always look for writers who are willing to go places that you would never imagine going. Like mm -hmm. I remember watching an episode, the finale of uh, The Sopranos, and I remember when Carmela and Tony got in such a heated fight with their marriage and things were said that you would never say, but you mm. would think, mm. but you would never say. But that writer had the gift to really take us in to that moment and make us experience it on a level that became real uh, and authentic and and it in doing so you universally hit your audience where they go i see you you see me we are the same yeah how do you do that i mean how do you if you're if you're not that that level to being able to put yourself out that that way do you have any advice on how you get to that point 
Do you know, I have worked with writers of all ages. Uh, literally, I just did a writer's retreat in France. And there was a writer who was 21 who had gone through a very, very difficult life turn uh, having to do with her parents' divorce and other things that were involved in that. And, and she immediately went to the page for Sanctuary. Mm. So, and with her, I can't say that I, I knew her voice because she wasn't one of my mentees. But I had a mentee who probably mid-30s uh, who had experienced uh, some difficult life turns and whose voice was probably where I see often in this process of taking somebody into their 40s and 50s before they're really able to get to that place. And she got there because of mm. where she, what she's gone through in life and how story intuitively uh, comes through her because she had a clear sense of what she wanted to say with her story. Okay, that makes sense to me. I'm gonna turn this a little bit, and I guess I look at you as, as someone who's looked at story for screenwriting, for TV, but also just story itself for for many years. I guess I want to get some of your thoughts on what you. Part of it's when I say the word story, that has many meanings for different people. Oh, of course. Maybe, so I want to understand what what story means to you and what you've learned about story in your in your journey. Okay, so well, story for me to become a good writer, no matter what the platform you need to be a good novelist you have to be a very internal person. So you have mm. to be an observer of life. And then when you're, you're writing TV and film, you're becoming more external. So certain, you can still be internal as a film writer because you're not forced into a writer's room. Whereas as a TV writer, you are forced to come out of your shell because you have to be external with that but when mm -hmm. i when i look at story in general i think the way i had a quote a few years ago i said uh let me think uh the strong the best way to be a strong storyteller is to be present when your own is happening hmm. so i work with writers on identifying and mining their emotional truth so that we understand within that emotional truth what their message to the world is and why they want to tell the type of stories they tell. So for me, story is, is a merging of, of an emotional truth in your own life with your imaginary imaginary or fictional story that you're putting on the page you know as you, as you explain that you remind me of i think i think you're also a fan of joseph campbell and some of his oh yes it's Huge. almost you're, you're yeah. almost touching this place where it's almost you, you can't quite touch it completely i mean perhaps yes. where it's this place yes. where i, I could experience something but there's something there and i'm going to the edge of it if i'm yes. really being fully honest open authentic vulnerable and that expression comes out through your work. Does that, does that seem, sound right or how do you see that? 100%. Like uh, art and expression comes from how we interpret what happens to us in our lives. So art and so, so oddly, the more moments you've experienced that have turned your world upside down, the more all is lost moments you have the more you have to say to the world because that means you've been exposed to vulnerability, to responsibility, to having to figure out, do you want to fall victim to your fall or do you want to rise above it and be an active hero in your own story? And, and the hero's journey is something we all face every day in our own stories. So it's, so it, it is, really looking at our lives and how the sequence of story happens and then looking at comedic and dramatic structure and taking the emotional truth in the interesting moments 
and moving them into the structure for the platform that is the best platform to tell the story to hit the highest level of recognition with what you want to say. Okay. And so what I what is I guess looking at your own story, what has that done for you to dive deeply in that and then basically create yourself become the hero in your own story? I mean, are you rewriting it and 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 I want to say making up stuff or are you just reexamining what really is there? Oh no, um, I think when you're forced into an all is lost moment, you you're in it. I mean, mm. you you there is no making up. You you are in the fall. So you have to figure out what does my life look like for me? Part of the journey was who is Jen Grisanti if she's not the vice president of current programming? And and looking at I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a friend, I'm a girlfriend, I'm a wife, you know, whatever my role is, is is really understanding beyond the identity that so many of us cling to when we when we achieve in the corporate world the title and the you know so I, I definitely think that looking at that like it's interesting what you said and I loved how you said it like story is something that when I look at the people who achieve the level of where they need to be and where the voice cannot be ignored or the story cannot be ignored. There's so much life that has to go into that process mm -hmm. and that outcome. And then it's not just about the talent, it's about opportunity meeting talent at the right time. So, you know, so I definitely feel like for me, uh, there was no choice for me. I it was sink or swim. Like I was, uh, you know, I had achieved part part of my goal, which was vice president. Uh, my my full goal was to run a studio, and that's what I thought I was being groomed for, and that's where I thought I'd be. And so, uh, when that took a shift, and you recognize that you, at that point, I had 17 years of experience and value inside of me. And so the choice, do you want to fall victim to the fall and leave the business and do something that you don't love? Or do you want to rise above it and recognize that your story connects you to your audience? So for me, I came into that recognition after my divorce and writers would come in and my ex-husband was an actor. So a few people knew about it and they would ask me questions. And, and as soon as I would expose or be vulnerable, then they would spill all their story. Mm. And that's when I would be able to go, have you ever written about that? Have you ever thought about what, what message came through that? that you could put into your writing. And so through through doing that with other people, when I was forced to utilize my own story to define my new path and have to be open about my story, but at the same time, have to still be confidential, like there are details that I can't go mm. into. So that's why I always go into my emotional response to it. Okay. You know, I was, so, I was, yeah, I was going to ask you on you know, how, even though you may, may have dealt with it yourself and you're good and you're like, okay, I can be vulnerable in this area. That doesn't always mean spilling everything out there and just throwing it Oh, all. no. You know what? I love that you asked that question. So the interesting mm -hmm. thing is, this is what you, when people go through divorce, right? You go through this time that is called crazy time what they literally have labeled as crazy time. And, and during this time, you could go on a first date and you could expose things that people are just not even near <laughs> ready to hear. Like, but because you're in the raw, vulnerable place of thinking that other people want to know details of the drama, then, then it comes out. Whereas when you're dating five years after the divorce, it's a whole different thing. 
but but that story has to come through you enough times in order for you to process it and be at a good place with it. So that's why I always tell writers when they're the most vulnerable, when I have writers come to me either right after uh, a divorce, right after they've lost a parent, right after they've lost a loved one or a sibling, a lover or a sibling, I always will say to them, recognize, is the story ready to come through you? Mm. Have you healed and processed what happened? Because until you heal and do your own emotional work, the story is not going to come through you in the best way that it could. Yeah. Now I've heard that several people explain that to me. And it totally makes sense. And one other thing I've heard I want to hear your thoughts on it is that I said something else fundamental for your, yourself personally going through that process is writing, mm-hmm. writing that story. So many of my guests have, have mentioned that, yeah, that the writing process is a processing process. It help is. you work through that and oh yeah make it to writing the, other side the book better. was my therapy without <laughs> a doubt writing the book was my like when i wrote storyline finding gold in your life story that book only took me three and a half months to write because it had been in me for 17 years it was mm. ready to come out it it had been something i'd been thinking about for a very long time and and then change your story change your life I think it's such a fascinating thing because immediately after Storyline, you know, the public, my publisher was Michael Weezy Productions was like, you know, what else, have, what else are you thinking about? Yeah. Or is there any other? And they happened to be opening a spiritual division of books, which was definitely a part of my brand and who I am. And so that led to um, change your story, change your life. Now that wasn't, ready to come through me that Mm. story i was still in the process of healing so that took me 16 months and it it was a much more arduous and um challenging process because i was still moving through the emotions of what had happened yeah that makes sense it makes sense we have to work through that yeah, I guess on the on the writing side, or, or I guess understanding story writing, writing story, bringing that out. Is there? I'm not a fan of like the, the quick fixes or, or the, you know, the you're gonna, you're gonna figure this out in one day or two days. But are there some things that you found that help you accelerate your pace in your growth and in, in the in the craft of writing, crafting story? Definitely. I happening? mean, I think like things that you come into. Um, I think things that make a writer notable uh, is when a writer understands theme symbolism and message and how to thread that all together. So I have developed tools, but my tools, like my latest tool, could could apply to your life and your story. Mm. So my latest story tool, and my tools come from watching brilliant writing. I'm a huge fan of Netflix and Hulu and Amazon. Probably most of what what I watch are on those, you know, streaming places because See, that's that's like, that's like a great yeah. way to research because I'm you know I research yeah. I'm a chemical engineer so I research yeah. chemical right. engineering and other stuff. I, that that sounds like the research I want to do. Yeah. Watching shows and analyzing shows and and seeing yeah. what what is good story. Yeah, because that. <laughs> Like for me, when I watch, and I watch shows from all over the world. So, Mm. I mean, the British shows, quite honestly, I think the British shows are some of the best writing in the world. So, Mm. so I, and my formula actually is something that I've seen in British shows, French shows, and Scandinavian shows. And, and it's called Triangle of the Wound. And Mm. so when I, what I tell writers is when you're writing your story, think about what, your chi- what the childhood wound is for your protagonist, how that could come out either through the negative parent or in the story itself. Then if there's a trauma that happens 
sometime before we enter the story, which many shows are doing now, there is some big trauma that they don't want to start the show with because I'm sure they fear it would be a downer. So they have that trauma that's still this trigger. And then you have your inciting incident in a film or your series trigger and dilemma in a pilot. When you link the childhood wound to the trauma that happened before we enter the story to that trigger or inciting incident, then it splits open that wound. And then you have three fertile places to draw from with re regards to the emotional response of the character to the story. Mm. No, that's good. That's good to hear that, that breakdown. Yes. You know, I, I take it from what I studied about you is that you're constantly learning still about story and always. About, about the craft. And I always say I'm a teacher for a moment. I'm a student for life. Oh, so that, that was an example of something you've learned. Is there anything else that you've learned, I guess, maybe recently? That oh, you've learned the story? I mean, endless. I would say, well, uh, I put a post up on Facebook the other day where I said, due to everything happening, I, I definitely believe the future of story that we're going to see more of a focus on the internal goal being achieved versus the external mm. so so now we have many of the greatest stories ever told have a perfect alignment but they're more often than not the external gets achieved and most of the focus is on the external and the quantifiable mm. versus the internal if the story is written well, then somewhere around the midpoint, the protagonist discovers uh, that or becomes conscious of his or her flaw. And they mm -hmm. recognize that they won't be able to achieve the external goal until they understand how to heal or resolve that flaw. So mm. that's when the internal and the external really connect. And, and uh, you know, I mean, for me, I'm everything I do. Like I have a million story tools. It's, it's what I do. It's, you know, how you, how you see what works. And, and I always tell writers, like, keep a journal when you're watching TV and film or reading a book. And if there are moments when you cry, Write down those moments. How is it hitting you emotionally? What are you feeling? And how can you mimic that in your own writing? Mm, that's good. That was good. I, you know, there's a moment, there's a one I was crying about recently. I can't quite remember what it was. I'll have to go back and think about it. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll have, to, yes. I'll have to do that. Yeah. So have you seen the story evolve in the way we tell stories? Oh, 100%. Okay. Like the story in 1992 when I started my career to story now, it's night and day. I mean, it, story is always evolving. When you look at, you know, starting with Breaking Bad and everything that stemmed out of that mm. up to right now, The Handmaid's Tale to, you know, um, what's the God's one? Um, there, there's another, you know, really dark, Dark, like all these shows have paved the way for story to move outside the box. Mm. And so story is always evolving as life is evolving. I mean, yeah. we, we are always evolving, which is why I love understanding people like Joseph Campbell and Aristotle, but also why I love studying how life is affecting people now and how that's transpiring into their art in the stories they tell. Yeah, one of my thoughts is that there's probably nothing as powerful as story for us humans, the way we take it in, the way it can move us and change us. And so there's always, in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, you know, are there stories that aren't, be to aren't being told that should be told? Have you seen that in your career? Like, I wish more people tell this story. Oh, or, all the time. Or, like when you, you know, there's something called the blacklist. And 
the blacklist is this list where agents and managers can submit and entertainment attorneys can submit the best scripts that their clients wrote that didn't get produced. Mm. And then very often, if you make the blacklist, your, your film could wind up getting produced. So, mm. um, so I think, I, I think the biggest uh, recognition that I made of Hollywood is they don't know either. Like they don't mm. know when story is definitively going to hit at the level that it does. It's rare. I would say the two shows that I did feel like a lot of people who knew the shows knew they were going to be a, a big success, but still it's hit. We don't, we don't know for sure until we get the results. So until then everybody's just throwing stuff out there and hoping that it will connect with an audience. And Modern Family and This Is Us, those are probably two of the shows where I would say Hollywood knew those shows were going to be a success, where I would mm. say there was a chord that was hit where people knew. So, so I, I do, I found, but there are so many shows that in between that you would have, you know, you would have looked at the pilot and said, yeah, that'll be a hit. But then the next three episodes, you lose a sense of what the show is and suddenly you lose your audience. You know, mm. it, it is a very difficult thing to know in any story, have total clarity with what you're trying to say. And if you don't have clarity, Certainly in the television world, you lose your audience in the first 10 minutes, first five minutes. So, mm. so story is in a place where there is so much more pressure to bring your audience in immediately versus the slow, slow, slow build. Now, is that a I was going to ask you, how has technology or the changes in technology changed in the story? Is that part of it? Because we want that oh, definitely. Grab that like, oh, without a doubt. I think digital storytelling, I think uh, virtual reality is going to totally change things. I, I think the story experience of really being able to put yourself in the worldview of the protagonist, which they say many of us do anyway, but virtual reality is going mm. to bring that to a new level where you truly are experiencing things as the protagonist experiences things. So I definitely think with uh, technology uh, evolving that it will impact story in the way it's being told. Yeah, I can't see how it would. And I, I, you know, I'm a fantasy of sci-fi and stuff, so I look at the old Star Treks and the holodeck. And I'm like, I'd be living on that holodeck because I could yeah. make any story I want <laughs> and I could be yes. in it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Well, yeah, this is this that. has been a thrill to, to talk with you. Oh, I thank you. I want to make sure you. the audience uh, knows, I guess, a little more yes. summary on what you're doing today and where to find you. All right. Okay. So today I am, as you mentioned, I'm a story career consultant for writers. I work with writers in television and film mostly. I do work with novelists here or there, but most of the novelists that come to me want to turn their novel into a film or a TV pilot or a limited series. So I help them with that process. Uh, people can reach me at jengrisanti.com. So they just have to have the spelling of my name. Everything will come up on my website. Uh, if you're interested in working with me, I do one-on-one -on -one consults. I do seminars. I do teleseminar. Uh, I, I teach, so always watch my website to know where I'll be teaching next. And uh, if the one-on-one -on -one consult is something you want to do, I have a page called the Writer's, Writer Proposals page that lists all of my services. So that will tell people. And then my email is jen at jengrosanti.com. Okay. Okay. You know, jen, um, I guess I want to give you one closing opportunity here and you know for someone out, out there is maybe in that writing area maybe early on struggling um maybe a bit of a bit of advice for them on what you would 
what would you say to that person? I would say, you know, you have to recognize writing is a lifelong journey. It's, it, it is so similar to the life process in that we psychologically think, oh, when I'm vice president, things will be perfect and life will be great at every level. And, and we get there and we recognize that life, life doesn't shift in the way that we imagine that it will. Mm -hmm. And so the writing process is the same thing. It's not when you get that agent or manager that all of a sudden everything's just going to happen. You are a partner in your success happening. So I think for, for newer writers, the, the best advice I can give is be the entrepreneur of your career and mm -hmm. recognize even if you do take on a manager or an agent, they are only getting a small percentage. So that means that you are still required to do that 90% of the work on your career. So it's really committing to that and recognizing that writing is not an overnight quick fix thing. It is yeah. something that you have to learn like medicine or law and you have to grow into it and you have to understand how you can draw from your life and you have to be conscious of your own life themes that are going to separate you from the millions of other writers out there. And you just have to recognize that doing something you love and having that passion, there is nothing better. So, so just don't look at the destination and be in the journey of the process of what it is to become a story level at the highest tell at the highest level we all want that like i am always searching for writers who can tell story at a level that will impact all of us so so that's what we want yeah that's a beautiful and yeah. it's a continuous journey that we keep going on so yes yes well jen i thank you for spending right. time with us on story hinge you got it's been a blast it. and uh wishing you the best all right. Thank you so much. I wish you, you the best as well. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you for being with us. And thank you, Jen, for spending time with us on StoryHinge. For those of you that want to connect with uh, Jen Grisanti, you can do so at jengrisanti.com. Like she mentioned, that's J-E-N-G-R-I-S-A-N-T-I.com. And just a few remarks here on closing today. One is that... I guess to reemphasize that lesson that to utilize all that we have experienced, all that we've gone through, all our, all those things that we've learned and let all that play out for us in creating better stories. I think that's so key that it all can play a role if we let it. And also to be really good storytellers, we have to be present in our own lives and really observers of life is what I've gathered and that we, are able to notice and be aware of life and all the little intricacies and be able to bring that out in our story creation. I think Jen hit several of those points again. And I also like how Jen talked about how, you know, on a traumatic um, event or a challenging time, you can evaluate, has that story gone through you enough that you're able to then tell it or create it in your, in your storytelling? I like, the, I like the framing of that, that it has, has it gone through you enough? Um, hopefully not excessively to where you, or maybe, maybe, maybe part of it is that is getting through that and working through that. And if you need help and counseling for that, to, to get through some of those life's challenges, that's okay too. Well, that's going to wrap it up today. Just a short one. Hope you guys are having a great week out there. And again, I invite you to subscribe to the podcast and share it with others. And also, and for those of you that want to dive into the story of the greatest influencers who have ever lived, check out 73 Mentors, where I'm co-host with my brother on that one as well. You guys have a great week. We will catch you in a couple.